you were saying uh, before we went to the break that it's very, very important when you get into these Premier League meetings, everybody's respectful, etc. But the Man City 115 charges and when they'll be decided and what they did or didn't get up to must surely lead to a, a fair bit of debate among you and your fellow chairman. Certainly, it's, there's, you know, there's, there's, people have spoken about it over the years. I mean, the thing to obviously keep us in mind is that the 115 charges are a lot of repeated charges mm. from season to season. So they're not 115 unique um, charges. Um, look, there's a process. Again, is it the right process? But there's a, a quasi-judicial process in the Premier League. The Premier League effectively are the Crown Prosecution Service. They look at the evidence. They pass that to a panel. That panel is run, you know, like a court, you know, it has very, very, very high stringent standards. Um, and in often cases can be challenged in the high court, you know, as one of the cases that, that, that I had with one of my ex-managers. So um, it has to run its course, unfortunately. I think probably w mainly if, if people are frustrated by anything is just simply how long that can take. Um, and I think that that isn't good for us. You know, I think that the faster the decision making can be and the faster the sanctions um, or not um, be, be, be dealt with, the better. What, what we hope for, I think, going forwards is that the things that we've seen happen really start to act as a deterrent. And I think we're seeing in the transfer window, people are being much more circumspect um, about what they do. So we'll see what happens. I, I genuinely don't have a view about whether Manchester City have done something right or something wrong. I just don't have the detail on it. Um, but obviously there is a case to answer that the, 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 the Premier League feel. Uh, UEFA did. It's a very similar premise upon which the UEFA case was, was, was fought some years back. And I think everybody will, will be relieved when we get to some kind of a conclusion. Do you have to carefully look at your own books? I mean, you're doing very well, obviously. You're bringing in quite a bit of revenue with some of the sales. But do you carefully look and say, oh, goodness me, where are we PSR-wise this week? Well, of course. And one of the things that I would say, I mean, you know, I hear a lot of stuff about, you know, oh, we're being made to sell our youth products. PSR is a three-year rolling mm. test. You know, so you know when you're going over. <laughs> you know, you know that if you're, you're creating a run rate that's going to take you over and you've got a good amount of time to adjust back for that, you know, and you need to make sure, I think, that the things that you think will enable you to adjust back to that are possible to do. You know, if you think that, well, we're going to run over for a couple of years to try and outperform, but we'll be able to get back in sync because we'll be able to sell these players then. Um you know, you can't really complain about what those players are because you made the decision to go over. Um, we're, we've always existed pretty much within PSR. I think when we sold Aaron Bissaka, you know, we were we, we, that was one of the things that we had to do to really make sure that we that we complied. Uh, but we've never particularly run it close. You know, we, we, we're somebody that, if you like, you know, take the rules seriously and we've we, we, we've stuck to the rules. And I think that the people that haven't, haven't intentionally, you know, I think they thought, we'll spend this money, we'll get this fantastic sporting performance and we'll be okay, you know, and then they found themselves overrunning the runway. We're now looking at a new system, it's no secret, which is, you know, cost caps. And I think in some ways, you know, they'll be much harder, they could be much more restrictive and I'm worried that they really will start to affect the competitive balance. You know, one of the things that's been marvellous about the Premier League is all of this inward investment. You know, we've had massive investment from all over the world. You know, people prepared to lose quite a bit of money in, in the pursuit of winning and improving facilities and bringing brilliant players in in order to do that. And with a three-year test, you know, you can do that because you can come and you can invest quite heavily in the first couple of years and either that gives you the sporting performance you wanted or you can, you know, ratchet back. When you've got an annualised test, which is what FIFA are bringing in and what, what the Premier League are running a shadow year of this year so that we can see how it works, I think it's going to be much more difficult. But my, my sense is, my gut tells me, you know, you'll get to this point in the transfer window where you literally can't buy somebody until you sell somebody. Um, so it's going to be an interesting year while we work through it. Um and, and some big challenges ahead to try and get it right. Did you have any sympathy with Everton and Nottingham Forest? Of course, I've got sympathy with with, with people. No, no, you know, I don't. 
there's not a club that I wish bad things on, you know. I mean, I know how difficult it is to run a football club, how hard everybody's trying and um, what devastation it is to a football club, you know, if they if they were to get relegated. And, you know, I suppose we're, we're fortunate so far in those, none of those point deductions have resulted in a, mm. in, in, in a relegation um, and that's quite positive. But look, I do think, you know, if you've got rules, you've got rules. You can disagree with them and you can say they should be changed and they should be different. But if you've got rules, you've got rules and they should be applied and they should be applied fairly and evenly. So some clubs just have a department in the building just to make sure they, they hit PSR. Do, do you have that or presumably individual lawyers, accountants focused on that? It's not that hard. I mean, it's... it's Why do clubs get it wrong then? Well, I mean, I suppose when you get in... I say it's not that hard. When you get into areas of capital expenditure on stadiums and, 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 and some of the things where I think it, it did feel a bit unfair for Everton, you know, that you couldn't write off some of your stadium costs until you had planning permission. I mean, that felt a bit, you know, unfair. And I think they they got some latitude on that and that was the right thing to do. Um, but really, it's, it's you know, it's your playing costs, you know, and your manager costs um, against you know, uh, your turnover, really, and you can't lose more than, what is it, 33, 34 million a year to get 205 million over three years. So, of course, you've got somebody keeping an eye on it, but it, it really shouldn't be too complicated. Do, do you understand Chelsea's long-term deals for players? <laughs> um, I, Everybody that comes into the game... Look, what I say to people who are looking at coming into football is... First thing you need to understand is it is as mad as it all looks. We are really all <laughs> losing that amount of money, and um, that the, there isn't some secret to it. And and that when you get in, you'll be let in on the secret, and 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 it isn't as crazy as you think it is. And the second thing is you won't be able to make as big a difference as quickly as you think you can mm. to things like commercial income and 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 all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know. It, 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 it's one of those things where the finances of football are very, very difficult and they're, they're, everybody's losing money um, and you need to try and work out as best you can the way that you stay inside the rules, you improve your club and we don't create rules that are so restrictive that you know you can't ever ladder up and everybody's pinned in the same position. Steve, uh, just before you go, I did ask for texts and WhatsApps and emails and all that. I've had quite a lot from Brighton fans, so I'll just pick this one out, which sadly is anonymous. But um, Steve, as a Brighton fan, I'd love to hear your views on what you think of Brighton as a model and what you think of us being top of the league. Congratulations to Brighton being top of the league. I think these are the things I think. You're not a proper football club unless you've got a rival. Unless you've got a team that stand up and sing stand up if you hate whatever you're not a proper football club right so I, I love having Brighton as a rival um, I've got so much time and respect for the people that run that football <clears throat> club I think they've done an absolutely outstanding job I think the fact that we've got a club that we're you know rivals with and we're nip and tuck and you know we're trying to do better than them and they're trying to do better than us is a fantastic incentive for us and is a fantastic incentive in life and um, I wish them, I genuinely, genuinely wish them all the best because I want to do better than them. Um, and if we can do that, I know we'll be doing very well because they're a brilliantly run club. So you quite like them then? I'm not one of those people, you know, it's a football rivalry, right? I want to beat them. I want to mm. beat them for our fans. Um, but I love the play Brighton when I go and visit and people all seem very nice to me. I mean, I don't, you know, it's not a personal animosity, you know. <laughs> um, and, and we very much enjoy the derbies. We enjoy the fact that People understand that it's a, a rivalry and, and, and that we get television time from it. And, you know, we've spurred each other on, I think, which is great. Can I just ask you quickly on the pyramid, which I know is, is very important for you. How, where are we with a new deal? Well, I think we're a bit of a reset with the, with the new government. You know, I think everybody accepts that, that we need a new deal for football. I think that what's very important is that we, we, we do two things. First of all, is that we, we open it up again. I mean, I was very disappointed, for example, that within the last deal, we lost all the infrastructure money for lower league clubs. I'm absolutely passionate that the thing that leaves a club better off from owner to owner is an improvement in the infrastructure in the stadium and the training ground. You know, these are the things that will make a club capable of getting into the Premier League and, and, and really um, laddering up. And I was really disappointed that that was cut back um, by, by, by the Football League. I'm disappointed where, you know, the amount of money, I think there's too much money 
being aimed at the championship and not enough money being aimed at League One and League Two. And then the other thing that we've got to get right is who pays for it. You know, it needs to be fair. Um, and, you know, I think that every club, while they're in the Premier League, should pay their proportionate amount of it. That's absolutely right and proper. But I think that, you know, it should be equal to the, you know, the the, the revenue and the income that, that clubs have got. I don't think it's right that, uh, you know, a club like Crystal Palace or Brighton should be paying 5% of their revenues towards it and much bigger clubs should be paying 1% of their revenues towards it. So I think if we can get all of those ingredients sorted out very quickly, I think everybody would love to move on and see a healthier game and and, and, and help the, the, the pyramid that we're all a part of. Steve, we've had lots of complimentary messages coming in this morning for your uh, for you being our guest. I'll just pick out this one, which is Richard from Colchester. Brilliant interview with Steve Parrish, as well as talking lots of common sense. Steve's speaking style is very easy on the ear. If only some of our politicians had Steve's communication ability. Here, here, Steve, thanks very much for your guest on Sunday Edition. Wish you all the best at Brentford this afternoon and for the season ahead. Thanks, guys. Really thanks, enjoyed Steve. it. On AM, on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.